Where was I going with all that? Ah, so that's our secret sauce. That's what we do. That's what differentiates us from everyone else out there. Um, I do believe it's a simple process, simple, not easy. You know, it was, it was fun because the last two super successful customers, and don't get me wrong, they're by no means normal, okay? They're definitely like unicorns in their own right. But those two folks, you know, one joined in 2018, the other one joined in 2016, and now they've both sold over a million dollars worth of art because they worked diligently on their marketing the entire time. So there is, there are aspirationally things to strive towards and people are doing it, but again, you have to put in the work. So. Where was I going to go? What do, what do you guys want to talk about? Do you guys want to go right into Q&A based on that? Or do you want to talk a little bit about Instagram? Um, we can do dealer's choice on a Friday. Keep it light, fun. If anyone has a question now, we can we can go right into those. In fact, why don't we just do that? So if you're one of the ones that has a camera on and you've got a question, all you have to do is raise your hand. I'll see that. I can bring you on. You can ask me any question about anything. Also on this call that you can see up there in the grid, um, we have Andrea. She's a, um, a customer. And so if you don't want to hear it from the shill company mouthpiece, i.e. me, and you would rather hear it from her, you can d address questions to her directly. Um, and we can, we can go anything about anything. And if we want to do a little bit of a deep dive on Instagram, we can do that too. Uh, if you don't want to turn your camera on, you don't have to turn your camera on. Okay. I hate being in on video, but this is my job. Um, at the bottom of the Zoom window, there's a little smiley face thing, and it says reactions. And if you click that, there's a way for you to raise your hand, digitally speaking, that sort of gives me a cue, uh, lets me know that you might have a question, uh, and then I can bring you on. Uh, you can also throw questions in the chat, and then if you are one of the ones that is watching on Facebook or, what else is on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, I can see uh, your comments as well, and I will answer those directly um, also. So normally it just takes one brave one to kick us off to kind of get the questions going. So. You know, I need the aforementioned brave one. Who's going to be? Someone's going to step up first. See, Johan, thank you. Thank you, okay? All it takes is one. All right, you're you're uh, you're up first. You'll just need to unmute. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm very curious about the Instagram because I've had an Instagram account now since 2018 and never even realized it was private this whole time. Yeah. Um, but that is definitely where I'm posting everything right now that I do. Yeah, you know, whenever I do stuff, that's where I post it. And I mean, I'm 43. I really do not have much of an insight on Instagram. Yeah. Um, so if we can start there, that'd be cool. Okay, love it. Um, and I should I should mention too that you know, <sighs> no, I'm just going the Instagram route. Okay. The beautiful thing is, out of all the places that you can market as an artist or photographer, right? Like, let's talk about all of it. Uh, the social media sites or Pinterest or TikTok or YouTube or LinkedIn or Twitter um, or insert name of new social network that's worthless uh, anywhere else along the stack. There's really only two that are important. It's Instagram and Facebook, okay? And Instagram and Facebook, the convenient thing in all of this is that they are obviously owned by the same company. The inconvenient thing is they are tyrannical and you put all your eggs in one basket. That's a little terrifying. There's not much we can do about that, but it needs to be said. So any the, the, the beautiful thing too, especially about Instagram, Instagram is more important than Facebook. Instagram is one giant visual search engine. What do you guys do? You create visual things. And Instagram is rapidly becoming sort of the default sort of want to learn more slash credit check of an artist or a photographer. And so let me explain that. I somehow get drawn into your ecosystem. I got into Johan's ecosystem. Somebody was like, I look at some of my, my, I'm in my buddy's house having a beer. I see a piece on the wall. I'm like, where the hell did you get that? That thing's awesome. He's like, yeah, my buddy Johan, go check him out. He's not going to send you, send me your website. He's going to send me your Instagram handle. And when I go to your Instagram handle, it is now going to be a credit check on whether or not you're an up and coming artist and you know what you're talking about. Do you have a pretty avatar? Do you have a decent follower account? Do you have a decent description? What does the post makeup look like? Do you have enough posts in there? And, and, it, and it's sort of a way for folks to credit check whether or not an artist is legitimate. So it's very, very important. Secondarily, and this is important to say, Instagram's audience skews a little bit younger, okay? Facebook's audience skews a little bit older, and the older they are, the more money they have. The older they are, usually the more art that they purchase. So that means we can't ignore Facebook, okay? We can't ignore Facebook. And let me just say for the record, I know Facebook's not as in vogue um, as Instagram is these days, but 
make no mistake about it, Mark, Zuck Mark Zuckerberg is not MySpace Tom, okay? Facebook is not just going to fall off the face of the earth. They are way too smart, have way too much money. And if we're playing the long game here, you know, if these stupid things, which I bought and used like three times, if these stupid things ever become a thing, which eventually they will, which are these, you know, VR goggles, Facebook's going to own it. So I say all that as a cautionary tale just to say we can't ignore it, okay? But the beautiful thing about Instagram is all the content that you create for Instagram, all the little boxes, is the exact same boxes on Facebook. So the way that I recommend things at first is you start out cooking on Instagram, doing the best that you can, learning there, and then you start moving them all to Facebook, and then you start doing that consistently. That's the ball game. And so the interesting thing about marketing on Instagram is we kind of have to get into the weeds and do a little inception here for a moment, okay? And Instagram is essentially three social networks inside one social network, okay? Three social networks inside one social network. And very few people talk about this. It's very important to understand this. So if you look at my screen and you look at the thumb, social network inside Instagram number one is the feed, okay? So when you come to your default, let me get out of that. So when you come to the default here, you open up the app and you're scrolling up and down like this. This is the Instagram feed, right? To look at your feed, you click on the bottom right-hand corner in the little grid icon. And don't worry, by the way, I'm recording this. I know I talk fast, I can't control it. I will send you guys all the replay. You have to slow it down and go back, okay? So this is the grid, you have an entire feed, right? And so this is sort of your feed. That is social network number one. Um, social network number two is their newest product that they stole from TikTok and then YouTube stole from Instagram and now everyone's stealing from everybody is called Reels, okay? And Reels are a little bit confusing uh, why they do this is because they're sadists and they like compunction. They can never do anything straight. There is a real reel, okay, which you create on Instagram, which is 120 seconds or less, which you use their editor to create or you upload a video. You can do some things to it. You can add music. That is a real reel. And then any video that you create also on the platform whether you post one to your feed, whether you post it into a video carousel, whether you do a live broadcast, is also a reel. Because now they call everything reels. And that's confusing. But reels, so confusing, is the second social network within the social network. The third social network within the social network is Instagram stories, right? Which they stole from Snapchat not too long ago. And all three are important, okay? All three are important, and the way to think about it is, let's say you had the opportunity to get your art uh, into a museum. Huge, well done, congratulations. The museum has three rooms, right? People are going to come into that museum, some people are gonna go into one room and leave. Other people are gonna go into two rooms and leave. Other people are gonna go into three rooms. People are gonna come back and go into one room, ignore the other two, and hop around in every combination and permutation imaginable. Your job, is to make sure your art is hanging on the wall in all three rooms, okay? All three are important. Every single solitary time, your art is not hanging on all three walls. You are losing impressions. You are missing out on people seeing your art. You're missing out on the opportunity for people to get bonded to you. So you have to create for all three, okay? The good news is once you learn how to do this, it's incredibly easy to create for all three. Within these three social networks, it's, it's important to understand that there are multiple different ways that you can post, okay? We'll just knock the stories out because the stories are easy. The stories are just stories. There's a couple of different things that you can put in there, but the stories are the stories. In the feed, okay, you can create single image posts. You can create video posts. You can create carousel of image posts, carousel of video posts. You can create hybrid carousels, couple images, couple of videos, any combination thereof. Reels, you can create the aforementioned real reel, okay? And, and then an, an additional uh, incredible post type is live broadcasts, right? So you can touch a button, go live, and instantaneously be talking to whoever's online at that point in time in your feed. It's really an amazingly powerful tool. It sort of sucks when you don't have anyone that's following you because all you're doing is going live for your mother to see you and your significant other, okay? You can see them or call them at any point in time you want. You don't need Instagram to do it. But once you have some followers, then it becomes really, really powerful. So 
I'm telling you all of that to tell you all that, okay? We are all awash in data in today's day and age as people that are marketing digitally. Some of you guys have websites, some of you don't have websites. Some of you have Facebook, some of you have Instagram. Some of you have email. You're probably wondering what metrics you should be looking at, right? What's important, Patrick? Yes, I know the number one most important metric in my business is of course sales. But if we're gonna be growing a business like this, we're gonna need a number two most important metric. And there is, there's some great arguments out there. Is it add to carts on your site? Is it visits? Is it time on site? Is it the number of direct messages you got? Is it the all often to mention likes, comments, shares, reach nonsense? Is it video views? Is it fans? Is it followers? I'm here to tell you, you can ignore every damn one of those. All of them, all of them. If you wanna take your marketing seriously, your social media marketing seriously, because as we know, it is the single solitary greatest place that you can do right now, highest ROI place to grow an art of photography business. There's only one metric that matters, only one, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to get it in a second. We need a metric that is gonna properly align our focus on the one thing that will actually grow the business and we need one metric to focus on that will properly align our focus such that we can ignore all the rest of them, okay? I don't care about followers, I don't care about fans, I don't care about view counts, post shares, comments, it's all nonsense. And the reason it's all nonsense is because what I see everyone do is focus on them, look at it, analyze it, try to make decisions based on it, and everyone does that to the detriment of the only metric that matters, okay? There is a rule out there, and most people have heard about this because it's a part of the zeitgeist, right? Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book called Outliers. In that book, there is the 10,000 hour rule, okay? I don't, some of you I'm sure have heard of it, some of you not. His point, if you wanna be truly world-class at anything, you have to invest 10,000 hours to practice and get good at it, okay? That is a terrifying number. Everyone cites these stories all the time. He's got this incredible story about the Beatles and how they did these gigs and played more live before they were ever popular and it's why they were so huge. Whatever, I don't care. I don't wanna talk about 10,000 hours. Let's talk about something real, okay? There's also a 100 hour rule. It's a 100 hour rule? I think it's a 100 hour rule. And it states that if you spend, in fact, I think I have it. I think I have it because I used it for something. Let me see if I can pull it up. I'm gonna play it. Hold on. It'll, be, it'll give it way more teeth. Oh, come on, that's not it. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play it because I want to, because I, I, I love this. I just did a podcast episode on this and I included it. And hold on, it's just gonna take me a second to pull it up. And I'm gonna put it on the screen share too so we can all watch it. It'll give it a little more teeth. I don't know who came up with this rule. Um, I don't know, where in the world is this? Okay, here it is, I got it. Do, 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 do. I'm just gonna play the audio. And then we in the, the rule of 100 states that if you spend 100 hours in a year, which is 18 minutes a day, all of us in any discipline, karate, violin, piano, whatever, if you spend 18 minutes a day, which is 100 hours a year, you'll be better than 95% of the world in that discipline. It's just the consistency of whatever you do. I kind of agree with that. I kind of agree with that. And you know, if you were gonna write a one word summary of Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hour rule and whoever the heck came up with the 100, 100 hour rule, whatever it is, it's just consistency. And where all artists and all photographers fail is consistency. Everybody gets going, gets humming, gets humming, thinks they're waiting, th thinks they they're do a hockey stick moment. They don't hit the hockey stick moment and they quit and then they're no longer consistent and they leave and they lose. So my position knowing you guys where you are in your business and where you are in your careers, especially as it pertains to digital marketing, is if you focus on this one metric, this one metric alone, and you multiply it by enough time, you will grow a significant art of photography business. And it is number of pieces of content created per week. Number of pieces of content created per week. The beautiful thing here, you guys, is when you get a business Instagram account, Anyone can switch their Instagram account in whatever format it's in now to a business account. It takes two seconds. It's a completely reversible decision. Why would you want to do that? You would want to do that, and look at my phone, please, um, on the screen. You would want to do that so that you get what's called the Instagram Insights Report, okay? And if you go into the Instagram Insights Report, by default, it gives you down here the total pieces of content that you created in the last seven days. It's a little hard to see this, so I'm just gonna read what the counts are, okay? 
posts 10, stories 47, reels 47, videos 2, live videos 2. That's a slow week for us, okay? That's a slow week for us at Art Storefronts. But what I do is I get my calculator and I go 10 plus 47 plus 47 plus 2 plus 2. So Art Storefronts created 108 pieces of content this week in the last seven days. That sounds like a lot. It's actually not. We're usually doing about 200. So we had, a, for a number of reasons, um, a difficult week. And the reason that I argue this is the most important metric that you can focus on is because I've, all, I've been multiple times in my career exactly where you guys are, just getting started. And when you're just getting started, there is this tendency to want to overanalyze things and want to look at the data and want to try to understand what's working. And then you go and look at a bunch of these other people that have high follower accounts. And then you next thing you know, you're looking at cat videos and you just lost an hour and a half of your life. Okay. It's not good. It is not productive. When you're just getting started, if you only focus on the number of pieces of content that you create per week and you multiply that by 52 weeks a year from now, you are going to have a significant, significant level up in your business. And I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding because what it does is it forces you to get creative with how you create this content. It forces you to get more comfortable uh, being uh, uh, on camera. It forces you to get more creative in how you tell stories, how you talk about your pieces, how you show behind the scenes. You start getting the reps and sets no different than when you're trying to you know, get better at, a, at anything, right? You, you know, you're getting better at golf, you're taking thousands of swings, you're getting better at bowling or whatever it is. And so many people get distracted and come off the train and, and th the beautiful thing about that 100-hour rule, you guys, is you do that for a year and you're better than 95% of the population. Do you know how many artists and photographers are on Facebook and Instagram? A lot. Do you know what happened if you were better than 95% of them? I'll tell you what. You are going to get way more attention than anyone else is. You're going to get way more eyeballs. And so that insights report that I just showed you, going forward, my customers are like, I'm still trying to figure out my niche. You know, the sales are just not coming as quickly as, as, as I want them to. I'm feeling a little bit down in the depths. I tried what you said, uh, uh, Patrick, and my business is just not going anywhere and I'm frustrated. Do you know what I say? Send me a screenshot of your insights report right now. I want to see it. Send it to me. And let me see what it was over the last week after week after week after week after week. And if there is nothing there, then what are you complaining about? Because no one else is going to do it for you, right? And what ends up happening is when you start doing this on Instagram, I use the two word, words interchangeably. They're the same. Facebook and Instagram is the same for me. It's just one platform. That's it. But when you start doing it on Instagram, Instagram has stories. Facebook has stories. Instagram has feed posts. Facebook has feed posts. Instagram has reels. Facebook has reels. One just goes right to the other. And I don't want to get into the mechanics of how that happens. You download them all by hand and put them up there. But when you focus on Instagram first and you work on having five to six stories a day, seven days a week, and I'm not kidding. You have uh, 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 two to three feed posts a day, two to three reels a day, seven days a week, your business will start humming. You will start getting more and more comfortable, okay? You will start realizing how easy it is. You will get into a position where you're like, you know what, this is actually kind of fun. You will take that God-given creativity you have and channel it out of the lens, off the canvas for a moment, into something that is equal means uh, and within breadth for creative expression. It's really an incredible thing that what you can accomplish doing these things. And I might as well do some tactical to leave you with that. So what am I gonna do? I am going to create a reel, which is a green screen reel. And I would say when you're just getting started, focus on reels first, master that first, because they have the highest ROI, return on investment. Um, and then you can go downstream from that next. But I might as well do this. What I'm gonna do is just watch my screen, okay? I'm going to create, it, it's, it's just best to do this in real time. I have a podcast, okay? And in the podcast, I have a latest episode. So I'm going to screenshot that episode. I'm gonna go into Instagram. And I'm going to create a reel. And so that's just a little plus sign up here that never seems to work when I'm doing the demo phone. So what happens when your demo phone is an old phone? I mean, this thing's on its last leg. And so what Reels has is what's called green screen. 
And this is an incredibly powerful feature. And yes, I have a real green screen behind me. Ignore that, okay? That's just a coincidence. You don't need to see that. But what I can do is I slide from the center button, one left, two left. If you're on an Android, it might look a little different for you. Instagram, through its AI, has now given me a green screen effect. And I can use one of their stupid images that are included, or I can change the background, I can go to the camera roll, and I can grab the camera image that I just shot, right? So what I've done now is grab a screenshot that took me two seconds to create of my podcast that I'm trying to promote. I've created a green screen, so it doesn't matter how messy my house is, or if I'm in my car and I'm not proud of my car, or whatever the case may be. I can just hit this green button. What's up, Instagram? Brand new podcast drop today. And do you know what I'm talking about? The second most important metric in your business. You don't know what it is. I want to teach it to you. Uh, you got to download. You got to listen to this. It's a very, very good episode, and it's going to set me up for all my future episodes. How can you find the podcast? It's everywhere you need to find a podcast. All you have to do is look for that ugly orange logo up there art marketing podcast, search for it, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Acast, Aweber, whatever that's on all of them. Uh, I want you to listen to this foundational episode. I press stop, I press next. What's up Instagram brand? You blow hard. I'm not even gonna give this a title or a hashtag because I'm too busy to right now. Hashtags don't matter anymore, FYI. You only need to do two or three, not 50, okay? If you want to and if you have time. The description is far more important so normally I would give it a description. Quite frankly, I don't have the time right now, so I wanna go share. So now what I've done is I've created uh, uh, an, an Instagram reel, okay? And that Instagram reel that I just created in two seconds uh, uh, without leaving my chair, why I'm displaying the entire thing to you, is that a little bit meta? Works two ways, meta, because the brand's also, whatever. Um, that's now posted to my feed as well. So I just created a reel that's gonna go into the reel section of my page and it's uploading, otherwise I would show this. And then Instagram is also gonna take that reel and it's gonna place that reel in my feed. So really, I created two pieces of content, okay? So if you look here, I wanna show this to you, look at the phone for a second. So if I go to the Art Storefronts feed, there I am with, with my eyes cut off. And then if I go to the reel section, there's the reel as well. Now I'm gonna click into the reel, I'm gonna press the paper airplane icon, and what this allows me to do, and don't worry again, I'm gonna send you guys the replay, you can go back and look at this in detail. I'm gonna add this thing to my story. And what Instagram has done is essentially taken that video. Today, and you know what I'm talking about? The second up. most important metric in your... Um, it's taken a little snippet of that and now placed it into my story and I can change the background color of my story and I can move the blowhard around and I can give it a sticker. I'm gonna give it a sticker. I'm gonna type podcast. C-A-S-T. No, that's, that's not proper spelling. I had this fancy keyboard thing, but I've got no space for it on my... So new, 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 new podcast. Awesome. So I'm gonna put this up like this. New, 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 new podcast. That'll go, I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna hit share. Now I'm done. So I just created, in a minute, a reel, a reel that then got placed into the Instagram feed, that then got placed into a story. So in a minute and a half's time, I just created a piece of content, and it was actually a good piece of content because it's promoting my podcast, which is a really good episode, and I feel good about it. So you can see how it gets easier and easier and easier to do, okay? In addition to that, Instagram, they keep copying TikTok, which is great. And by the way, if you're on TikTok, you're wasting your time. Terrible application uh, run by communist China. They're harvesting our kids' data, stealing attention span, and no one's selling any art on it anyway. And don't tell me you're selling any art on it because I already know you're lying. Everyone tries to tell me, oh, I'm selling so much art on TikTok. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm coming over to your house right now. Show me. No one is. God, I hate that app. Anyway, why I love that app is because it's introducing competition to Meta, which Meta really hasn't had. You know, Facebook or Instagram has really not ever had any competition. Facebook had some competition, it was called Instagram, they bought them. Facebook then had some competition, it was called Snapchat. They tried to buy them, Snapchat said pound sand, then you know what they did? Copied Snapchat's number one feature. You know what it was? Stories. Sorry, Snapchat didn't need to buy you. I have all the users, I'm more powerful. Then TikTok came along. TikTok's like, hey, TikTok, I wanna buy you. They're like, no. And then, and then he's like, well, wait, wait, my wife's Chinese. I'm learning Chinese. They're still like, no, because we wanna spy on Americans and we hate you guys and this is war. So then what did Facebook do? They just copied the TikTok features verbatim. 
verbatim. And then YouTube copied those teachers, and now everyone's copying everyone. You can't even tell the difference between one or the other. Doesn't matter. All the attention is on Instagram, so that's where we need to be, okay? So what was I saying? So TikTok had this feature first. Instagram copied it. But when you make a real reel, this only works for real reels, okay? People can leave comments on the reels, all right? You can then go into those comments, hit reply, and what Instagram will do will give you reels that look like this. They automatically grab the comment, they put it, you can move it all around, put it wherever you want, and you can respond to it directly. The person that left the comment gets notified. In addition to that, everyone on your feed gets notified. And so I want to show how to do this very, very briefly. Let me find a reel from earlier today. Here's one. I'm going to look at the comments. Okay. And it's a bunch of people just saying Jonah. Okay. I'm going to hit reply to this one just to show you. And when I hit reply, we are greeted with this lovely little box. It looks like a normal reply. Everyone knows what this looks like. If I press the blue button, it has now taken that comment and it's putting it right above my head, okay? So what this does is this gives you an opportunity to easily create another piece of content, but then also, what am I gonna do? I don't wanna talk about what I have for breakfast. It's raining outside, I'm depressed, my hair looks terrible, what am I doing? Oh, I'll just reply to some comments, easy enough, right? And the beautiful thing is this gives you the ability for one to many marketing whilst at the same time one to one. So somebody comes to Johan's profile, Johan or Johan? Johan comes to Johan's profile. He's like, whatever, you get that all the time, I know. So someone comes to Johan's profile and they're like, God, the colors on that piece are amazing. Where is this? And Johan's like, oh, taking this thing yard. He goes, hits reply, puts the little thing above him, maybe changes the color. And he's like, you know, I worked for 16 hours on this piece and it was a beautiful sunset in Newport Beach, California. Uh, it was magic hour. The water uh, was just glistening like it only does for about 15 minutes and that's what I painted. Just to let you know, it's a limited edition. There's two left. I normally sell it for $4,000. If you want to secure it, I take deposits, $500. Real is done. What's happened there is one, Johan just hit his content for the week quotient, okay, or quota, rather quotient, quota. Two, he's responded to this person directly. Three, he's leveraged the fact that someone is interested in his work to all the rest of his followers, created a little FOMO, okay, created a little FOMO. And because, I, I hate teaching this part, but I'm gonna teach this part just for a second. You cannot bank your careers on the short-term arbitrages of what's incredible about the algorithm because it changes so fast it's unbelievable and no one has the full mastery of it. Okay, disclaimer aside, you can take advantage in the short term of things that happen in the algorithm. One that it's happening right now is that Instagram, for whatever reason that I don't understand, is really trying to drive this feature home hard. What does that mean? That means you could create two reels, a normal one and a one without that comment in it. That one with the comment in it will get twice as much reach, twice as much views, and be seen by a whole heck of a lot more people. I don't know why that is. They're trying to drive feature adoption, okay? So the point is, is there's a short-term arbitrage in creating reels that look like those right now, okay? Very, very important to know. What else do I wanna teach about on that? I don't know, I feel like that's a lot. Should we leave it there? I think that's probably a lot. I have an upcoming like massive workshop that I'm gonna talk about where I'm gonna go into depth on so many doggone things, it's incredible. but. What I just did is I created a reel, put the reel in the story. Then I responded to a comment, okay? I could have put that reel in the story. So in a very short period of time, I've hit my daily content quotient, right? And I didn't even do that in 18 minutes. Now granted, I've been doing this for a while, so it's quick, but 18 minutes a day. You guys tell me you can't do 18 minutes a day? Do you know how good you would be if you did 18 minutes a day for the entire year? I'll tell you how good, really damn good. And you'd have a ton of attention as a result of it. So, all right. Going back to the questions. Going back to grid mode. Johan, I want to start with you. And thank you for flattering me by looking like you were taking notes. I'm hoping you were writing love letters to someone else, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna infer that it was actual notes based on anything that I've seen. Did that clear things up a little bit? Or give you some give you some directions to go on? Yeah, ahead. um that definitely um helped out a lot, especially with the comment section. Um I posted a single picture on Facebook the other day of just a sunset here on Pacific Beach that was just gorgeous. And usually I post a couple of pictures, 
I posted just this one I had to share, mm -hmm. and somebody messaged me to buy it. Um, Wait, Pacific Beach, Northern California, or Pacific Beach, Southern California? Uh, Southern California, San Diego. What street do you live on? Um, I'm on Sequoia. Sequoia, so, and I'm like three blocks from the beach. So I lived on Missouri and Cass. I lived okay. on Emerald and Cass, and I lived on Lauren and Nathaniel. Nice. In the in in the heyday, which was called college, and God, do I miss those days? And Lord knows, yeah. I would like to go back. But anyway, enough of that. Um, beautiful, beautiful spot there. Beautiful, beautiful spot. Oh yeah, the uh, photography opportunities here is just amazing. Yeah, amazing. Uh, just just that commenting and the focusing on the reels and stuff that helps out a lot. I'm gonna start practicing that Good. immediately. And switch to a business account and make sure your damn profile is visible. Your hand, okay? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. And subscribe to the podcast. You'll like it. Um, who else, guys? Questions? Fire away. Simple hand raise or the digital hand raise. And it can be anything about anything. Anything about Instagram. Anything about your niche. You want to talk books, poetry, anything with the Barbie movie. Do not want to talk about that. Thank God I don't have girls. Um, Ellen, it's going to be, I hope, next week. I hope next week. That was a therm. That was a therm. Maybe next week. By the way, a very, a very therm. Maybe very therm. Perhaps. But who else, guys? Questions? You guys are a shy bunch today. I mean, James, the fact that you're looking so dapper on a Friday. I mean, I feel like you're going to have to have a question. I mean, the suit, the, the just the whole thing is just working for me, brother. I'll, I'll unmute you. I'll unmute you just because now I got to hear your story with that outfit. Uh, you have to hit the mic icon. All right, I'm unmuted. You're unmuted. All right. Um, so if you were going to suggest one form or one, I guess, platform, mm -hmm. would it be Instagram? Because I yeah. right now, I, like, I'm really only posting on LinkedIn, and I I don't even know why. I, this like I I I don't like social media. Um, I have taken a step back, and I'm only using LinkedIn. Period. Like. Oh, and Twitter. I started using Twitter, sort of, but um, <clears throat> my ratings on LinkedIn, whenever I post, they jump up for like a week, uh, like 1,300%. So, um, totally, totally know where you're going with the question. Here's how I answer it. Um, and I'm not sure if you were on at the beginning, but you know, the. Should the, I just do an Instagram? Yeah. The, the, yeah. the funny, the funny thing is, like, there's no That's one true. way to do it right? There's no one way to do it. And it's no different than like, if I'm a doctor, and you come in to get like a diagnosis on what's wrong, there's there's blanket things that you could diagnose, but you can't really, really diagnose until you know someone's individual situation and what's going on there, right? Like the one to one medicine is the best way to do it rather than blanket medicine. It's like, Oh, I have a cold, take this. At a macro, Instagram is the most important platform. I believe that you need to be on it. I believe that you need to be on Facebook. That is without question, you can still do LinkedIn, the percentage of artists and photographers that are doing anything substantial business-wise on either of those two platforms is extremely low. It's extremely low. Now, that can also spell opportunity, especially if you have a good following there and they know and like and trust you and you have good things to write about. But I believe that Instagram and Facebook are very, very important. They're gonna be here for a long time. You need to be on them because this is the long game we're playing, right? Like I want you to build a huge business and I am a social media marketing expert. Do you know how much I post on social media personally? Absolutely nothing. I hate it. I hate talking about it. I find it vapid and annoying. But I'm also contrarian. I'm also contrarian. Right, well, in the world that we live in today, you and I are fishermen. And you know what we have to do? We yeah. have to get our asses up in the morning, go down to the harbor, get on the boat, and drive the boat to where the fish are. Right now, yeah. they're on Instagram. I, they're I on like Facebook. to eat fish, so um, and I'm a man, so let's let's get it. Yeah. Let's go, go out there with our fishing poles. Yep. You know, before the sunrise and That's get right. the best fish because uh, why the fuck would we not win? Exactly. Right. So, yeah, let's, uh, I, I guess, Instagram then. That's funny you say that you're contrary. I, I find myself to be similar. And I um, I don't know. I, 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 will, I will create a page dedicated to my work because I have no interest I like I almost view my I don't I might have deleted my old Instagram account if it's still out there it's like I it's like a um, a time capsule I'm not going yeah. to touch it yeah yeah the, the the problem though too is like 
and this is a hard lesson to learn for artists and photographers and, and, and a great many don't. And, it, and it's essentially art sales consist of 50% someone liking the art and 50% knowing the artist, knowing what makes them tick, being interested in their story, being interested in the story of the piece. And so you're out there posting and all we see is the art and we don't understand anything about you. What makes you tick? What makes you interesting, right? Like, okay, yeah. James, James dresses and he likes fashion, okay? I like fashion. Now we're bonding and talking about fashion. Now we have a shared interest. I'm now more bonded to you and more likely to follow your art, right? Let's say a dog walks in in the background. James likes dogs. I like dogs. Now I'm bonding with James over fashion and dogs. James likes fishing. I like fishing, right? Like those yeah. are an important yeah. part of the sale. So the, the ones that do it best, like I don't need, no one needs an entire window into your entire world, but you got to show some of the things sometimes that make you tick. You got to show some That's of the things sense. sometimes. That well, you in my art, so my art is <clears throat> tends to have some uh, political yeah. uh, overlap or, or engagement. So I, I can like post some of my speech. I'm also working on developing a public speaking platform that will be, uh, my, my lifelong goal is to be involved in uh, uh, global politics, geopolitics, um, especially as we look to develop the Neo-Arctic region. Okay. Um, so I, I can I can maybe do some snippets of my speeches or something like that, and then the art, those things seem to go hand in hand. A hundred percent. And like, look, you're looking, to, yeah. you know, th 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 this is the other thing that people get like hung up on. It's like... Uh, you know, I've got this other thing going on. I've got two businesses. Should I combine them? Uh, can I talk about the other stuff that I do? Like, yes. At the end of the day, you're the brand, right? You can mo you can monetize that following any which way you want. The quicker you get to building it, the more options that you have, right? That's awesome. it. That's it. That's good. This is inspiring because I've been in like a little bit of like a rut, so to speak. I, I haven't done anything for like a couple weeks now. So like... It's time for me to get back on the horse. Get and, back on the horse. Uh, hey, this is a good dressed start. like you, sunglasses inside. Your future is that bright. Let's do this, James. <laughs> ah, do yeah. This. All right. Let's get it. Yeah. All right, brother. Have a good weekend. Um, okay. Who else? Questions? Comments? Concerns? Anything about anything? Jamie and or Jaime, your beard game is strong. He's like, no, I don't have any questions. But cheer, cheers on the beard, brother. That, thing's, that thing looks legit. Um, all right, I'm going to send you guys all a replay of this thing because um, I know it's going 100 miles an hour and moving 100 miles an hour. But no joke, my contention remains the second most important metric in your business outside of selling is how many pieces of content are you creating for those platforms a week? And if you force yourself to do that, all kinds of opportunities and luck is going to start falling into your lap. And that's how it works in the real world. And Sarah, don't worry, I saw you. Go ahead, Sarah. Hi, I just was wondering if after you were finished, if um, you could go into the services that Art Storefront has on the costs. Mm -hmm. My first video watching you guys. So. Yep, 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 yep. What have you heard in terms of services? Just what you told me and what I read online. Yep. We have a new one. Um, we call it Copilot. It's sort of interesting because it, I don't even want to say this because then everyone's like, what? It does that? We have software that connects to your email, that connects to your social media profile, specifically Instagram and Facebook. And because we have access to your website, we have the ability to post on both of the sites and send emails and run sales on your behalf. Um, so that's sort of our, our latest offering. It's very interesting. It's four months old uh, and that's rolling and, and going along. How we charge, um, i.e. why we don't post prices on the website, although I'm sick and tired of not doing that, I think we're to a point now where we can be, um, is that we're way more expensive than everyone else is. And the reason is, is that yes, you get the aforementioned website and technology platform and solution. And really, if you're interested, you have to do a demo because it's an hour long session and they will walk you through all the bells, all the whistles of which there are so many. Backend CRM, uh, 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 all the fancy features on the website, everything that it does behind the scenes. We integrate you uh, in terms of prints. We integrate you in terms of merchandise with one click. You know, you can sell all the various different media types and sizes, a whole slew of various different merchandise products. Order comes in, you get paid, printer gets paid, printer prints it, boxes it, puts your logo on it, ships it, you don't have to lift a finger. Okay, oh, great, wonderful, all that. Um, so we have all that whole technology piece. But the other piece, like I said, is 
we're really just a postgraduate university that will teach you how to market and sell your art for the rest of your art selling life, which is forever. And that's what you end up paying for. And I believe our cheapest plan starts at like $1,500 down and like $49 a month, somewhere in that range. Don't hold me to it, um, you know, ideally. But again, what we've learned is we, if we didn't, in order for our storefronts to exist, we have to have successful customers. Otherwise, everyone cancels and you have no business. You're out of business. And so we've been on this journey, which we learned that the only way that that's going to happen is if our customers are regularly working on their marketing. And so we've created a system that does that. And we're completely different than any other outfit out there. There's not anyone that does anything even remotely close to this. It's like, you know, I, I keep playing this video, but we have, we have these sessions called office hours, right? And on office hours, week in, week out, six days a week, you can come in and ask any question that you need. And you have a ton of people on there that have been doing this for the last 10 to 15 years, myself, the CEO, the highest level people in our company. And all we do is just answer the questions. Where's this dog on video? I'll show you. It's cool. So the montage. <laughs>
How, how can I? I want to do a, a, a like a, a gallery, a family gallery. Yeah, all day, all, all day long, all day long. So, so I can promote their stuff individually since I know their art and I know their personality. Yeah, so, I mean, I, so you know, the I am usually totally against the co-op concept, and the reason that I'm against it is because trying to build a business with a bunch of different people, you know, in like a co-op capacity is kind of like, you know, the Mormon version of polygamy. Okay. I have one wife. I have enough difficult time trying to keep my relationship on the track to even contemplate having to do that with three or four or five. And that's usually the way that it works in a business. My only, my only uh, uh, rejoinder to that is that if it's a family, it's all good because everyone loves everyone. Because the issue that happens is, is that inevitably it's not how good you are at doing your artwork. It's who is doing the promotion. And if one person is doing the promotion in, in, in a massive amount and your other son is just creating the work and not doing any damn promotion and yet he's the one getting all the sales, that's where it gets weird. But if you can just iron that out as a family, then yeah, you could just call it, you know, the, the whatever, what is your last name? Aristi? It could just be the Aristi Gallery, right? And you could have everybody on there. And what's rad about it is you're in a different season of life that they are, right? But if all of them worked collectively to try to drive as much traffic back to the business and build the brand and build the social accounts, you know, when you're done with it um, and when you leave this earth, you have an entity to pass right over to them. So I, I, love, I love the family affair in that capacity. Um, I think you just need to be really good and open and honest and communicating who's doing the work, who's getting the revenue. And if one person doesn't want to do any of the damn work, then you kind of need to do treat it like a gallery. You'd be like, okay, 20% is going to the gallery then. Like you're going to know who all your buyers are, but 20% has got to go to the gallery to pay the expenses to continually marketing this thing. And I think if you, you know, if you specialize in communication and you take it year by year, that can be a fantastic way to do it. Like, you know, like again, I hate the co-op thing. It, it, if you're married to someone, you can totally do it. You know, if you're family, you can totally do it. If you're getting together with four friends, I think that's just a recipe for disaster. And so that's, that's kind of how I argue it. Um, I got a question in the chat, which is interesting, and it, and it comes down to this notion of the permission, okay? Permission, what can you sell, rights, rights management, all that. Um, get this all the time. Have a ton of customers on the site that are can we say ice skating in the charcoal gray area and or the thin ice, okay? This is not legal advice, Jonathan, because I am not a lawyer. Nope. Everyone says, and I don't play one on TV. Just smack people that want to say that. Like, don't say that. You're not funny. Um, I operate under the, it's easier to beg forgiveness than ask permission. Permission is near impossible to get, okay? Near impossible. After that, after that, you also don't know if it's going to work or if it's going to go anywhere and it's going to sell. And so what most people do is they work on getting all this permission and contacting a brand and trying to do a partnership and then they go to sell the thing and it's crickets because they didn't determine whether or not there was actually a market for this product or whether there was demand for this product. What I like to do is easier to beg forgiveness than ask permission. Start selling it, reserve some money in the sales in the event that any of these people ever contact you and just do it that way and don't worry about it and let the score take care of itself and certainly don't have it stop you from taking action at all at all i thought meg andrea had a really good way of describing it I, I would do that but i'm starting to run out of steam um on a friday so who who else has got comments questions any finals i will send you guys all a replay i hope you got some value out of it on a friday i appreciate you spending time with me on a friday um, I want you all to subscribe to the podcast. It's totally free. It's totally awesome. And it's weekly. A um, ton of really, really good content on there. And I should say, you know, both those, those last two episodes, um, both Jonah and Meg, um, all, all, those, all those big interviews are going to go right into the podcast feed too. So it's a great way to see them. But it's nice, it's nice to see the videos too. Um, so, yeah. Um, but guys, thanks. Uh, really appreciate you spending some time with me on Friday. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend. We'll send you the follow-up email. Um, if you want more information, there's demo buttons here, there, and everywhere um, all over the website. You can just fill one of those things out and go get a tour. Uh, decide if we're right for you. The podcast, someone was asking me, it's called the Art Marketing Podcast. It looks just like that. Yeah, there's like 60 or 70 episodes on there. 
a um, little bit over 100,000, 500,000 downloads on it already. Um, highly rated, except when I get berated for doing my sports analogies because half the audience are women and they're like, stop with the sports analogies. But I, I, I don't know, I watch sports. I don't even really watch so much sports. I just think the analogies make sense. I'm working on it. I, I'm working on it. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think, I think that does it. Guys, it's weekend time. Everybody have a great one. Appreciate y'all.